Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be review Blech. I'm going to be reviewing the Anastasia Beverly Hills Subculture Palette. It is the sister palette to the Modern Renaissance palette. I don't have the Modern Renaissance palette to compare this to, but I've heard from everyone that has it is that it's really great. It has awesome reviews on Sephora and it's like one of the like top like purchased palettes from Sephora, so that's really awesome. I hope that this one will be the same, but I've watched lots of reviews saying that it is not that good, but we're going to put it to the test and use it on my eyes today. And I did use it on my eyes here. And if you'd like to see how I created this look with the palette and my thoughts on it, then just keep watching. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So I have swatched the top row already in order. Um, that's the first time I've touched this palette though. I have no opinion on it yet. There's all the swatches. Although I have I've watched many many reviews on this palette and I know a lot of people choose to not watch any reviews before they review something because they want to form their own opinion but I still feel like I can form my own opinion and ignore all of theirs while I am testing this out. Um, but Everyone else has been saying that uh, it's very powdery and it has a lot of kickback and it's very hard to blend and some people have actually hit pan within like a few times of using this because it's just so powdery. And when I was doing my swatches I did notice it is very, very powdery, a lot powderier than any other palettes I've used, but they swatch nice, they seem pigmented. Um, yep, so I'm going to go ahead and swatch the second row now. I will I think I'll just do it on the top of my arm. So I'm going to go in with Roxy. They feel very soft. That's Roxy. I'm going to go in with Electric, one of the metallic ones. doesn't show up as much as you think it would. I don't even know if you can really see it. Now I will swatch Fudge. That one's very pigmented. Not very hard to work with, it doesn't seem. Now I will swatch new wave right beside it. The one at the very bottom. I'm swatching these all in order. Now I will do untamed Swatch is pretty nice. They all swatch nice, but we'll see how they perform on the eyes. This is Edge. Kind of a mustard yellow color. And then the last shade, Rowdy. Okay, as you can see, very powdery. You kind of have to fiddle with them to make the swatches look nice, but that's it at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to go clean off my arm and I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back from washing all of that off of my arm, and I just wanted to mention that the blue sort of stained my skin, and it also stained my finger just a tiny bit, so just keep that in mind. It's really pigmented, and it doesn't really want to come off. I used coconut oil and warm water and... It was kind of difficult to get off. So, this is what the palette looks like after I've swatched it. Not too bad. I also just want to mention that this palette comes with a nice brush. Uh, most palettes, brushes I don't use, but these Anastasia ones are actually pretty good, so I do use them. Um, 
and it's just like this is the pretty much the sister to modern renaissance that is a very famous well-known palette it is probably the most bought palette at sephora and it is very good i don't have it myself just because i don't know why i just haven't bought it yet i I'm kind of like, oh, it's permanent, everyone loves it, I'll get it when I get it. But this one, there was a lot of talk about this one. A lot of people were really mad because they got this palette and it didn't turn out the way they wanted it to. And I just really wanted to review it. Like, I wanted to make a review on it for you guys because um, I just wanted to give you my thoughts. And I honestly really liked the shades and stuff like that in this palette because it looks really really nice um it's really different too it's nothing that i have already that's for sure that's also a reason why i really wanted to get it and yeah so far the swatches were all right um they were a bit powdery but you know we don't know how they blend yet we'll see if i got a good one and yep yeah, let's just get started so i'm going to prime my lids like i normally would just because I feel like that's only fair. So I'm going to be going in with the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot and putting that all over my lid with my finger. I have my mirror over here, so I'm just going to... I'm just probably going to be looking over here. Now I'm going to give the camera a second in case I'm not in focus because sometimes that happens and it's just because I move too much so I'm just trying to give it a second to focus itself okay so I've got my lids primed with the paint pot and I'm just going to be honest, I think some of the problems with the reviews that people have made already on the palette is because they just weren't using it right and they weren't really prepping their eyes enough because like this, I will be honest, from all the reviews I've seen this seems like a really hard palette to work with and if you're not taking all the right steps and precautions to make sure it blends really well, then it's probably not going to. Other eyeshadows are a lot easier to blend in these ones by the look of things, I'm guessing. So you should really be setting down everything and just really taking your time with it and being patient. And I feel like you can get a good look out of this if you do that. Um, I'm going to be honest, as of right now, I'm hoping and I kind of don't think it'll be that hard for me, but we'll see. Um, we shall see. It could end up being horrific, I don't really know. But now I'm going to, um, I'm going to set down my primer like I normally would with the light shades out of the Rock Pro palette. I always do this. I'm going to give this palette a fair shot. Um, if I would always do this anyway, I'm probably always going to do it anyway. So I'm just going to give it a fair go. And I'm going to really try and make it work and give it the benefit of the doubt. I've seen numerous really bad videos and reviews on this palette. Like, I mean, like, they didn't like it type thing. And I've only seen two good opinions on this palette out of all the videos I've watched. And I've watched a lot of videos. I watched Jeffrey's. I watched Manny's. I watched Laura Lee's. I watched Tina. Tina Halal does. Um, I watched that Alyssa girl. I watched numerous videos. And they all didn't end up liking it. I watched James Charles. He didn't really say his opinion on it, honestly. While he was doing his eyeshadow, he said that it was a little bit harder to blend than doing the eye look he was doing normally is for him. But he still made a really nice look out of it, so I'd say that he sort of had a positive review. Um, who else did I watch? I don't remember. This also may be a bit of a longer video just because I really want to make sure that I give you a really good review on this palette. This palette will also be the first review that I've done 
on anything on my channel. I also really wanted to review this palette because it is really trending right now. Everyone has so many mixed emotions about this palette. Everyone is so mad. It's like the whole beauty community social media blew up over this palette. Everyone was very disappointed. And I just want to give myself some peace of mind by doing this video so that I know if it's actually good or if it's actually bad. A lot of people, when they were doing the review, they actually had to start over. Like, start over their entire makeup just because it wasn't working. I hopefully don't have- I hopefully I won't have to do that. I will if I have to, but I hope I don't really want to, honestly. Okay, now my eyelids are all set like they normally would be. I'm giving this the best chance I can to work really well. So, I kind of know what look I'm going to do with this sort of I want to use as many colors as I can without it getting out of hand um, so I'm going to do what I would normally do go in with this flat blending brush and I'm going to take a transition shade now I'm using Dawn and I think a lot of people when they use this palette they would they would say they're dipping in like they normally would but with this palette you obviously know that it it's very pigmented so I'm gonna dip in even less than I normally would so I'm literally Touching it very carefully, tapping off the excess like I normally would. Now because I went in so lightly with this, there wasn't that much kickback and there's not too much product on my brush. I think that's the trick. You just really need to be careful with it. It is a different palette, not all palettes are the same, and this one you have to tap very lightly into the shadows. A lot lighter than you would with any of your other palettes. Now I'm going to just blend this into my crease. And even with that little bit of product that I had, it is very pigmented. And it gets, like, it makes enough, like, pigment for me to know that it's there and that everything's getting set down. I'm not going to dip in too many times and overdo it because I think that's what a lot of people do with this palette is they overdo it. They put way too much on their brush. They don't tap off the excess as much as they should. They, even if you get too much, rub it off. Like, you don't need that much. And you just need to tap so ever slightly into the palette and just dust it off. I think the more careful you work with this, the easier it will be. And I feel like the less product you use with this, the better. So we'll see how that goes. Because every, every single review that I've watched, they just use a lot of the product. They keep adding more to try and blend it out. I'm going to try a completely different way and just do baby steps and work my way up and just be very careful with it and figure out what works best. I think you just really gotta, I'm hoping that the trick to this palette will be that you just don't take too much of it. You just have to take very little. I hope that y'all can see what I'm doing. It probably was really far away, but as you can see, you can see that my, trans my transition color is there, but it's blended and it's perfect in my opinion because I was being careful and I didn't use too much. And if you're careful with the pans, you don't get as much kick up or kickback or whatever. So it's a win-win. You just gotta be more careful. This sort of palette is more fragile than other palettes and you can't just dip into it and all that stuff like you would with all your other ones because it's different. It's not gonna be the same as every other palette. And I'm just really trying to give this palette the benefit of the doubt right now. I've, I'm telling you, I've never used this palette before. Now, like, this is my first impressions, and so far with the transition shade and the technique that I've been doing, it looks good, it feels good. So I'm just going to keep going with this. I hope that I can really like this palette because it is so beautiful, and I just think it's a really neat idea. I don't have anything else like it, so I really want to make this work. So I got my transition color down. See, it's not too much, it's just the perfect amount of transition. You don't need to have a really pigmented transition color because then everything else is just going to look weird on top of it. You don't want that to be 
everything on your eye. So anyway, now that I've got that down, I'm just going to go in with a different brush. This is just a fluffy blending brush. And I'm going to be going in with the shade New Wave. Everyone uses this color in all of their reviews. And I find that as soon as they add this color, it gets messed up. But I think that's because they just go in with too much. So I'm just going to try my idea. My brushes are clean, by the way. Um, they're stained. They're, they are clean, though. So I touched it. It was fine. Going in lightly. Just getting a little bit on there. Not too much. That's a good amount. I just went in very carefully. Now I'm just going to blend it into my crease just like the last one. And I'm just going to see how it goes. I'm going to add some more. Again, tapping very lightly into the pans and still tapping off the excess because I'm trying not to go in with too much. I'm going to work my way up to what I want to get. I'm not going to initially start off with a bunch of it and then have trouble blending it out because I just put too much on to begin with. Alright, see that? I, in my opinion, that's blended out really nicely. Um, I didn't put too much. I'm not trying to put too much because... You don't want to go too much and then not be able to blend it out. See, that time I dipped in quite a bit and I got a lot on my brush, but I just dusted a lot of it off. So far, so good with this technique that I'm doing. I'm not mad at it. Can you see? And I will just show you how lightly I'm dipping into the pans and how much I'm actually dusting off the brush. So... Here it is. This is the shade I've been using. And I literally dip in like just like a tiny touch. You don't need too much. These are very pigmented. You don't need to use as much as you normally would with other palettes. You just don't need to use that much. It's just not necessary. That's not how this was made. And that's not what it was made for. Okay, so now that I've got the shade New Wave all over my lid. Well, sorry, my crease. As much as I want to build it up because I don't want this to be the main color that I do. So, yep, that's that blended in my crease. Now I'm going to take the same brush and I'm going to dip into Roxy. By the way, I'm not sure if I showed you, but this is the shade I used. And I also used Dawn right there. And now I'm going to use Roxy right in the corner. And I'm also going to blend that into my crease. I just want to use as many colors as I can. And I, I like blending a lot of colors into my crease. So that's just what I'm going to do. Dipping in very lightly again. Dusting off the excess. And I'm actually just going to keep this a bit lower. I like the way this, the color of that shade. It's like nice and peachy. I like it. See? And it's, it's, it seems to be going pretty good. Okay guys, so now I've blended the shade Roxy into both of my creases and I think that that shade also performed pretty well with the technique that I've been using. So I will show you though this shade, even though I was dipping in very lightly, it does have quite a bit of kickback. I don't know if you can see it there, but there is quite a bit. I'm just going to blow it away though. Okay, so now that I've got both of those into my crease, I sort of just took those three shades that I used and mixed them all together and made like a nice crease color. I don't know. Um, now I'm going to be taking... I think I might take a little bit of the shade Edge, and I'm going to take on this sort of angled blending brush, and I'm literally just going to take a teeny weeny little bit and sort of add it up here, like a, up a little bit higher than everything else. So we'll see how that goes. Dipped in very 
slightly. I don't have very much on my brush. And I'm just going to place it up there. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do with that color because I just wanted a little bit of something, something up there to keep it sort of with the yellow tone type of deal. I'm going to do the other side. So that shade also performed well with the way that I used it, um, and this shade didn't have that much kickback. It was pretty good. Uh, wasn't really anything there for kickback. Now, I think I'm going to go in with a little bit of the greens, just because I never use green. So I'm going to take the shade Destiny right here, and I'm going to use this buffing brush sort of thing and I'm only going to take a little bit and I'm just only taking a little bit okay that kick back wasn't so bad okay and what I'm going to do with this shade is I'm going to sort of create a bit of a smoked out line and I'm going to do a little bit of an outer V sort of thing too. So, yeah. I'm just going to take this smaller brush and I'm going to use this to lay it over here. Okay, now I'm just going to sort of take it into the crease a little bit. Okay, so sorry about that, my camera just died. The battery on this thing sucks, so I'm hoping that I get a new camera sometime soon, maybe. You never know. Um, but yep, so I'm just going to keep going in with the Destiny shade. You didn't miss anything, I saw as soon as it got turned off. And I'm just putting this into my crease just a little bit, my outer V. Now I accidentally put some where I didn't even want it, so I'm just going to go in with a bit of Dawn and see if I can get it to go away a little bit. Alright, so that didn't blend out all that bad. That, I think that actually looks alright. I like the way that that looks. It's like a little bit of a smoked out liner with into the crease. And I'm just going to lay a bit of... Um, well, actually, I'm going to do this to the other eye, and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do next. Okay, so, I'm not going to lie, but that shade actually did take a bit more time to blend out to the way that I wanted it to, at least on the other eye. I'm a lot better at doing this eye than this eye, so, I mean, that kind of might have something to do with it, because this eye wasn't so bad, but this eye was hard to get the way that I wanted it to. Um, yeah, so, I mean, but I feel like... That's just what any dark shade would be like. I don't use many dark shades and do like cool like things like this with them. So I feel like it was just sort of my fault that that had happened. It, it did blend, I will say. But it was just hard for me personally to work with just because I don't, I don't ever do this look, honestly. So yeah, but I think that looks okay. I think it looks fine. So now I'm actually just going to take a little bit of the shade, um, I'm going to just take a bit of a Dorn. Yeah, I'm going to take a Dorn, which is the bronzy shade here, right there, and I'm just going to like put that in between where I've done the the thing, the green stuff, I'm just going to put that in between. I'm actually just going to wet this shade. I'm going to take some spray and I'm going to spray it. I've done that. I'm just gonna put 
blend this part a little bit more. I think that that looks pretty cool. Never done anything like that before, I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. If that looks cool or not. Because I don't really know. I think it might. I don't know, I kind of like it. I don't know, I'm digging it. Um, do that to the other side. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of the shade Electric, and um, actually, I'll do that after. Yeah, I'll do that after. I'm going to have to do the rest of my face first. But I can do my brow color. So I'm going to take the shade Q, which is the white with the pink, pinky reflex. And I'm going to put that on my brow bone. And that doesn't really show up, so I'm just going to wet it. I don't mind wetting shadows. It doesn't really bug me. Shows up a bit better once it's wet. Okay, so my lids are done. I'm just going to go ahead and finish the rest of my face. Um, I'll do that off camera just to save time because this uh, video is really about the subculture palette and nothing else. So I will be right back with uh, my final thoughts and finishing up everything on my eyes. Okay, so I'm back and I just finished the rest of my makeup and I also finished off my eyes and I just took the green shade Destiny and I put that under my lower lash line and I took the shade Electric and I put that in my inner corner and I'm wearing the Huda Beauty Gazelle lashes for my lashes and yep I'm wearing the Tarte Tartus lip paint and yep that's what I did to finish off everything um my final thoughts on the palette are that I liked it a lot when I was doing it Although, it did take a bit of effort to blend out, and you had to be really careful with it because they're really pigmented, so you wanted to be careful with it. But, overall, I think I like what I did. Um, I like the palette using the technique that I used, which is not using too much, and I like all of the colors in the palette. And I love the way it looks, I love the packaging, I like the brush that comes with it. But, I don't know, I liked my eyeshadow a lot more while I was doing it. Um, I don't know if I really like what I did anymore. I mean, I do, but it's sort of just the look. Like, I feel like that's my own fault, though. Like, I like the look that I did on my eyes, but I liked it a lot more while I was doing it, if that makes sense. I don't know, I kind of feel like it might have moved around a little bit. But, either way, I do like the palette. It's not one of my favorites. But I do like the palette and I like the shades and if you are careful with it then it is a good palette. And yeah, that's my final thoughts on the palette. So I'll give you an up close of what it looks like. Um, yeah, I mean the metallic shades, they weren't very pigmented. Especially Cube, you really have to wet that one to get it to show up at all. It doesn't show up at all without being like wet um and the electric shade same thing you really have to build it up it's not that pigmented the a born shade although like that's really nice it's nice with or without like setting spray and all the matte shades they're really pigmented some are powdery some are like more powderier or whatever than others some aren't that, like some aren't that bad And yeah, that's what I think of the Subculture palette. My opinion is not very popular. I actually do like it and I would use it again and I'm not going to return it. I'm going to keep it and keep using it. I think the people who didn't like it, they just have to be a bit more careful with how they use the shadows, uh, not use too much, and really take your time and build it up. So yeah. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. Um, yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you thought I did a good job reviewing the Subculture palette. And comment if there's anything I can work on. And yeah, 
I'm also going to leave my social medias down below if you want to go check those out. And thank you for watching and have a great day.